Hello students, how are you all? I hope all of you are doing really well. In today's class, we will continue reading the chapter, The Snake and the Mirror. We will also find out what happens next when the snake coils itself around the author. So let's begin. The snake's landing on me and my turning were simultaneous. I did not jump. I did not tremble. I did not cry out. There was no time to do any such thing. So I told you when we were ending the first part that the snake had wriggled itself around the doctor's shoulder. So here the snake's landing on me and my turning were simultaneous. Simultaneous means at the same time. So like the doctor has turned, uh, turned towards the snake and the snake's landing on his shoulder happened at the same time. He did not jump. He did not tremble. He did not even cry. Of course, because there was no time to do any such thing. The snake slithered along my shoulder and coiled around my left arm above the elbow. The hood was spread out and its head was hardly three or four inches from my face. So the hood of the snake, as you can see, I have given in the picture, the hood of the snake was spread out because it was a cobra. Okay, and the snake's head was only three or four inches away from the doctor's face. So you can imagine the situation the doctor was in, right? It's really scary. If it happens to any one of us, we'll be really freaked out. We don't know we will, uh, how we will react. We don't even know, right? So let's see what the doctor does next. It would not be correct to say merely that I was, I sat there holding my breath. I was turned to stone, but my mind was very active. The door opened into darkness. So he's saying that it would not be correct to say that I sat there holding my breath. Obviously, because he was also scared. So he just hold his, he was just holding his breath. And he turned to stone. Turned to stone means he became completely still he did not move like you have seen a stone it will be very you know stiff it will be staying at one position so similarly the doctor did not move and he became very still though he was still his mind was not sleeping his mind was very active the room was surrounded by darkness in the light of the lamp i sat there like a stone image in the flesh. So as you know, there was no electricity and only he was sitting in the light of the lamp. And how was he sitting? He was sitting like a stone image in the flesh. In the flesh means obviously he was a human being. He was a living human being. But from inside he was turning into stone. Like he was, he was sitting very still. He did not move. I felt then the great presence of the creator of this world and this universe. God was there. Suppose I said something and he did not like it. So the doctor is saying, I felt that there was a presence of the creator of this world and this universe. Who is the creator? Very good. God. So generally, it's very common tendency, you know, students, whenever we are in a difficult situation, we don't know how to react. We feel blocked. We feel that we are in a tight spot. What happened? We only remember God. We remember God from our heart. That, oh God, please save me from the situation. So like any of us, the doctor was also remembering God, that God was there. Suppose I said something and he did not like it. So the doctor is saying, what if I say something and the snake did not like it? I tried in my imagination 
to write in bright letters outside my little heart the words oh god so he's saying that i really wanted to you know write in my imagination in big bright letters okay the words oh god so that god listens to him and save him then he's saying that there was some pain in my left arm so he was having a pain in his left arm where the snake had slithered itself it was as if a thick leaden rod no a rod made of of made of molten fire was slowly but powerfully crushing my arm the arm was beginning to do be, to be drained of all strength what could i do so he's feeling he's comparing his pain to that he is saying that i felt as if a very thick rod made of molten fire was crushing his arm crushing slowly but very powerfully and the arm started to be drained of all the energy all the strength strength drained means to take out okay so there was no energy and no strength left in his left arm he is saying what could i do he is asking question what could i do at my slightest movement the snake would strike me death lurked 4 inches away suppose it struck what was the medicine i had to take so here he is saying that even if i move little bit slightly even if i move the snake would strike him okay strike means hit forcibly and deliberately death lurk lurked means lying hidden or moving about secretly so he felt that even if i move little bit he is going the, the snake is going to strike me and what will happen when he strikes me okay suppose it struck what was the medicine i had to take so obviously he was a doctor he started to think in his own ways if it struck me what are the medicines that i am supposed to take there were no medicines in the room i was but a poor foolish and stupid doctor i forgot my danger and smiled feebly at myself so he's saying that there were no medicines in the room after all he was very poor foolish and stupid doctor he did not even keep basic medicines with him so that's what he's saying he forgot his danger and what was the danger the danger of the snake that that streak uh, the snake would strike him he completely forgot it and he started to smile at himself smile we feebly feebly means something which indicates weakness okay it seemed as if god appreciated that appreciated what appreciated the smile appreciated the feeble smile that he had uh, smiled at himself god has appreciated that and why he thinks so the snake turned its head it looked into the mirror and saw its reflection so the doctor is saying that the god really appreciated that and why he thinks so because the snake has turned its head and it has looked into the mirror and you can see in the picture that how the snake is looking into the mirror and what he is able to see the snake is able to see the reflection his own reflection i do not claim that it was the first snake that had ever looked into a mirror but it was certain that the snake was looking into the mirror so he's saying that i'm not saying that it was the first snake who was ever looking into the mirror but i'm really sure the snake was looking into the mirror snake was looking into its own reflection into the mirror was it admiring its own beauty was it trying to make an important decision about growing a mustache 
or using eyeshadow and mascara or wearing a vermilion spot on its forehead now this is really funny that how the doctor is thinking what the snake might be thinking when he is looking into the mirror was the snake admiring its own beauty was the snake saying oh i'm so beautiful i did not know till date oh i have mirror in front of me i can see myself so was it admiring its own beauty or was it trying to make an important decision like the doctor had made that i will keep uh, i will uh, keep that attractive smile and i will grow my mustache so so obviously snake do not have mustache so how they will decide of growing a mustache or the snake also wanted to use eye shadow or mascara you know eye shadow is like a beauty you know cosmetic product that you use on your eyelids and mascara also it's a cosmetics that you use on your um, lashes eye lashes to make it look more beautiful or was the snake deciding to wear a vermilion spot a red spot on its forehead right so let's move forward and see i did not know anything for certain what sex was the snake was it male or female i will never know for the snake unwound itself from my arm and slowly slithered into my lap so the doctor as you can see is really curious to know a lot of things about snake what the snake is thinking when he is looking into the mirror what this what sex is the snake is it a male or a female but then he says i will never be able to know because the snake unwound itself from my arm and he slowly slithered into my lap now moving now the meaning of slithered here is to move smoothly over a surface with a twisting or oscillating motion from there it crept onto the table and moved towards some mirror perhaps it wanted to enjoy its reflection at close quarters i was no more image cut in granite i was suddenly a man of flesh and blood so the doctor is now saying that the snake has now uh, crept crept onto the table and moved towards the mirror and the doctor thinks that he was moving towards the mirror because the snake wanted to enjoy its reflection i mean see the reflection from close quarters i mean closely you know a closer look he, the snake wanted to have now he was no more image cut in granite i mean he was no longer a stone he was a man of flesh and blood he was he was man of flesh and blood means suddenly it felt like somebody has given him a new life okay flesh and blood are the uh, these are the words used used to show that he was living okay still holding my breath i got up from the chair i quietly went out through the door into the veranda from there i leapt into the yard and ran for all i was worth so he was still holding his breath okay he though he was relieved but he was still holding his breath and he got up from the chair he very quietly went out through the door into the veranda now obviously he was moving quietly because he did not wanted to distract the attention of the snake he wanted to run away from the snake and from there he leapt leapt means jump a long way with great force and he, like he really wanted to move really fast so that he is out of the house as quickly as possible so from there he ran very fast for all he was worth few each of us heaved a sigh of relief sigh of relief means to relax or to feel relieved somebody asked doctor is your wife very fat 
So now as you can see, the doctor is sitting with some of the patients and finally the story has come to an interesting point and everybody is feeling relieved that oh thank God the snake did not strike you and you were able to run away from the snake. Now the very interesting question comes from the audience that is your wife fat doctor? Now let's see what the doctor replies. Even we are excited to know how, uh, like, how fat is doctor's wife. No, the doctor said. God willed otherwise. My life companion is a thin, reedy person with the gift of a sprinter. So he's saying, no, no, my wife is not very fat. I mean, not fat at all. Because the God has wanted otherwise. My wife is very thin, like a reedy. Reedy here means tall and thin. She is very tall and thin. And she is a person with the gift of a sprinter. Sprinter means someone who runs a short distance at top speed. So do you remember that the, uh, that the doctor really wanted to have a fat wife so that she will not be able to run after him. But something opposite has happened and how uh, like uh, the wife wife is really a good sprinter she can run very fast okay let's continue someone else asked doctor when you ran did the snake follow you the doctor replied i ran and ran till i reached a friend's house immediately i smeared oil all over myself and took a bath the doctor is saying, I really ran fast and I ran till I reached, reached one of my friend's house. And after reaching there, I had smeared oil all, all over my body and I have taken bath. Smeared students here means to spread or coat something. So here what he had smeared? He had smeared oil. I changed into fresh clothes. The next morning at about 8.30, I took my friend and one or two others to my room to move my things from there. But we found we had little to carry. Some thief had removed most of my things. The room had been cleaned out. But not really. The thief had left behind one thing as a final insult. So the doctor went with his friend and some other people to his room. With what purpose? The purpose of emptying the room. He wanted to shift from there. He went there to collect his belongings. But when they reached there, they found that they did not have much things to carry. Because some thief had come and taken out most of the things from the room. The room was almost clean. But the thief had left one thing as final insult. Okay, as you can see in the picture also, there was not much thing in the, in the room. Okay, there was only one uh, vest which is hanging there. What was that? I asked. The doctor said, my vest. The dirty one, the fellow had such a sense of cleanliness. So the house had been robbed, everything has been taken away. Only one thing, which was his vest, and you can see it was a dirty vest. And the doctor is saying, the fellow, the fellow means here, the thief. Thief had a sense of cleanliness. He will not take something which is dirty. The rascal could have taken it and used it after washing it with soap and water. So the rascal here means the thief who had come to the doctor's house and had taken most of the belongings. But he chose not to take the vest. I mean that was left to as a final insult to the doctor. And doctor really thinks that he should have taken it and easily he could have used it after washing it with soap and water. Did you see the snake next day? Doctor? The doctor laughed. I have never seen it since. It was a snake 
which was taken with its own beauty. So the last question that the doctor gets from its story is, did you see the snake next day, doctor? But the doctor really laughs at this question and says, I have never seen it since. It was the last time I had seen him and it was a snake which was taken with its own beauty. I mean, the snake was so much engrossed in looking at the at looking at his reflection that he went towards some mirror to have a closer look at his reflection and it was taken by its own beauty. So really this is a very interesting, you know, uh, the end is very interesting how the snake was fascinated when it looked himself in the mirror. It was like the, uh, the doctor also claims that it maybe it was not the first time a snake is looking into the mirror. But definitely the snake was looking into the mirror and was taken by its own beauty. So this was all about the chapter. I hope you have really found it interesting and humorous. Right? So let us discuss some of the more questions given in your book for better clarity and um, better understanding. So let's see. Question number one. The sound was a familiar one. What sound did the doctor hear? What did he think it was? How many times did he hear it? And also you have to find the places in the text. When and why did the sound stop? So you remember I told you the sound was a known one, a familiar one. We have to answer that what sound did the doctor hear? Okay, I'm sure all of you know the answer. The doctor heard the sound of the snake which was coming from his room. But the doctor thought it was the sound of the rats. That's why he thought the sound was a familiar one. He heard this sound for four times. And the question here that you have to find the places in the text where it has been mentioned. So now the answer is here. Again, I heard that sound from above. Suddenly, there came a dull thud as if a rubber tube had fallen. And the sound had stopped after the appearance of the snake on the ground. Okay, I hope the question is clear to all of you students. Right? Let's move on to the next question. What two important and earth-shaking decisions did the doctor take while he was looking into the mirror? So this is something we have already discussed. Right? And I'm sure all of you remember it now. The doctor took the following two important decisions. The first one was that he would shave daily and grow a thin moustache to look more handsome. And second was that he would always keep that attractive smile on his face. Yes, very good. So all of us should also try to keep an attractive smile on our face, right? It, it makes us look more cheerful, more happy, right? Coming to the third question. I looked into the mirror and smiled, says the doctor. A little later, he says, I forgot my danger and smiled feebly at myself. Right. So these are the two, you know, uh, places or two, uh, you know, uh, instances where it has been mentioned the doctor looked into the mirror and smiled. And after an interval of some time, he says, I forgot my danger and smiled feebly at myself. The question is, what is the doctor's opinion about himself? when he first smiles and what is the doctor's opinion about himself when he smiles again? In what way do his thoughts change in between 
and why so let's say it's a long question answer is i'm sure all of you also know the answer but let us discuss it the doctor thought that he had a good smile when he first smiled he thought that you remember he thought that he had an attractive smile he looks good when he smiles but when he smiled a little later he laughed at his destiny his life was in danger his thoughts got changed because of the snake he was quite near to death so when the, i told you remember students that the snake had uh, wriggled itself around its arm but still the doctor looked at the mirror and smiled feebly weakly you know when he when he was looking into the mirror he remembered that there was no uh, medicine he was a poor stupid doctor and these made him smile these thoughts made him smile okay and the thoughts got changed because of the snake he knew that he is very very close to the danger very close to the death okay so these are the questions that we needed to discuss from your book okay i'm sure all of you have really enjoyed the chapter throughout with me i have found the chapter really interesting and humorous okay and that's it for today's class and uh, i really hope that you will find more such stories when you go forward and try to you know explore more chapters based on how animals feel or what they, do they feel when they look into the mirror this was just a small chapter on snake and its relationship with the mirror i will now take your leave students goodbye and take care